We're trying to change the future with a story. And um, we've been doing it for a couple of years, but we started thinking about it after the last elections went wrong. And um, we had an opportunity to go and talk to a lot of people after that and to, to talk to people from the kind of ministry level to IDPs and camps. And, uh, and we did a lot of research and, and we learned a few things. And the first thing we learned was that everybody is worried about Kenyan youth. And it's not surprising, given that half of Kenya's population is aged under 18, and 65% are aged under 25. The second thing we learned was that, despite that gloomy picture and the unemployment and the things that fanned the flames after the elections, there are a lot of cool things going on. There are a lot of cool ideas that young Kenyans have made their own, lots of activities in the farm, in the business, and in the, in the cities that people are engaged with that seem to give some hope for the future. But the third thing we, we noticed as, and this as, as media makers and as communications people was that there was no one in the media space whom we could find who was really trying to have an intelligent conversation with that half of the population. Lots of pop music, lots of chat shows, but no one really trying to make an intelligent conversation happen with half of the population. So we set out to do something about it with a story. And the story starts with this guy. His name is Boy, and he's 19. And he left school last year. He cleared Form 4, so he finished secondary school. He lives somewhere outside the city, but like so many like him, no job, no further education. His friends who graduated with him have joined a self-help group. But truth is, it's kind of a gang. And they're out intimidating people for money. Um, and they're determined that he should join them, but he hasn't, and I don't think he will, because he has a secret. And his secret is that in his bedroom, he's built an FM radio station. We don't quite know how he's done it, but he's, he's good with his hands. So Boy has built an FM radio station, and every day he broadcasts a show, a pirate radio show, from his, from his bedroom called Shujaz FM. And it's Heroes FM is a show that's a call-out to young Kenyans all over the country to step up. It's not coming. Don't wait for it. You have to make your own future. So if you're doing something cool, if you have figured something out, if you have a solution, text me, Facebook me, call me, and I'll share it with everyone. This is DJB's show. These are some of his listeners. These are the guys who are tuning in all over the country. There's, there's Maria Kim. She lives somewhere in the urban slum. She's got a kid bro she's bringing up. She's in Form 3. She's going to make it the right way. There's Charlie Pelle. He just wants to play soccer. He lives in the Rift Valley somewhere. They were displaced after the election. His dad is a blunt guy. Charlie just wants to mingle and have fun and keeps coming back with terrific ideas. There's Malkia at the coast. There's a host of these guys, all of whom listen to DJB's show, and they call in, they text in, they send him ideas that DJB shares with, with Kenya. And this together is our story, the story we call Shujaz FM. So we tell it in a number of different ways. The first way is in comic books. Now, if you bought the nation today, you will have got one, because we print them every month, half a million copies, actually. It's the biggest print run in the country by almost, well, it's double. We give them away in the nation, and we give them away from 12,000 Safaricom kiosks all over the country. The second way we tell the story is on FM radio, because we make DJB's show. We help him to make it, and we broadcast it every day, six days a week, on currently on 23 different FM stations daily. We also tell the story on social media. DJB's big on Twitter, he's huge on Facebook, he's on the web, and he's also on his mobile, he's on SMS. And recently, we launched a YouTube channel where you can also see some of his stories. So, because we do this all the time, we get to scale, we get to big numbers. And in two years, We've had 135 million reads of DJB's comic books. And we know that because we know the minimum number of reads for each of the 13 and a half million comic books we've given away is 10. And in fact, a comic which goes to school is read by many more than that. On social media, we've had a million hits since last year. On the radio, our research tells us that half the population under 35 has heard it. And we've had tens of thousands of SMSs. 
So together, this world is a place that young people are engaging with, they're talking to, they're enjoying, they're participating in. And the reason it works is because the team who make it are average age 23. They're just like our audience, and they make sure that the topics we chase and the stories we use are the topics that our audience is interested in. And that means that we can then fit other topics into those stories in ways that our audience will find attractive and, and come for. And because of that, our audience has grown to be very big. In fact, we recently did a piece of research with the economics department from Georgetown University who tell us that 62% of secondary school kids are reading Shoe Jazz every month. So you can see the scale of this. And indeed, we've learned a couple of lessons along the way. We know what works. There's an abundance of brilliant ideas that we've been sharing. We know the audience wants them. It's not about the ideas, it's about how to deliver them. And we know also that you can't push these ideas. You can't push millions of people to, to go in a direction they don't want to go. It has to be about pull. And we think it's the story that makes it pull. Thank you very much.